So, hello, welcome everybody, and uh, thanks for joining us again in uh, this webinar of the So, my name is uh, Robert Martin. I work in the team part of the uh, team. The team, we are one of the partners of the Five D Diamond Today, we are here for our third webinar. So, you get used the first two, uh, please go on our website to find this uh, at the end of the presentations, uh, or you are probably already arrived here thanks to our special channels. So you can easily find the links to the five inch webinars that have been uploaded and are available in our website and in our uh, YouTube videos. So 5G Climate is a, a project, a European climate project that is part of the Horizon 2030. Its goal is to demonstrate how to use this uh, live network uh, some uh, use cases of uh, cooperative and automated power. Some advanced use case where uh, we show how 5G can help in making the, the future of autonomous driving in our It's a uh, quite large construction that involves uh, uh, big layers of communication and automation work, and also uh, has the help of important research universities and groups. Uh, as I said before, we have already uh, provided two different webinars in which we have uh, uh, showcased the use case that we are going uh, to show for our audience. The first use case uh, is a uh, uh, Cooperative and automated lane change maneuver, while the second one is a cooperative and automated maneuver. So, in both cases, we are using 5G to uh, allow, to help to uh, have autonomous driving of cooperative maneuvers. The first case is for lane change, the second one for these new cases will be the most cited in the uh, corridor that connects Bologna to Greece, so through Italy, Austria. In order to uh, deploy this case on field with the other network, we had to come up with a pretty complex architecture that spans uh, throughout the uh, three different operators, uh, so that needs to put together uh, the work of uh, different entities. You see here the, the architecture that we came up. It's not my intention to explain it now. You can go back on the previous webinar to have more information. As you can see, there are a lot of elements that need to, put, to be put together and a lot of technological enablers that we have put uh, in place and uh, deployed in our, uh, in, in our uh, 5G Carmen platform. Today, we will focus in particular on uh, one of the most important elements, the, I would say the uh, the the living heart of uh, the platform of our platform itself that is the edge orchestration platform uh, to do that i have the pleasure today to have the help of uh, nina slamnik kriestrat uh, nina is a phd researcher in the field of applied engineering science at the UN university of antwerp and in the imac research center in belgium in 2016, she obtained her master's degree in telecommunication engineering at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in the University of Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. She authored and co-authored several publications and journals and international conferences. Her current research is mostly based on NFP, NFP as the end-based network architectures with edge computer computing for vehicle system and the management and orchestration of flexible and program programmable network services. So I would say that Nina is, uh, uh, she was part in the creation of and in the uh, deployment and development of this edge orchestration platform. So she is in the perfect position to present to us uh, uh, all the work that has been done. Before leaving the floor to Nina, uh, just let me remind you that you can interact with us in any moment just by leaving comments in our social networks. So if you're connected to, to YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, just drop a comment below the video. We will be able to see it. And at the end of the presentation, we will be able to answer your questions and curiosities. So without any further ado, 
I, I have the pleasure to leave the floor uh, to Nina. Thanks a lot, Nina, for being here today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Roberto, for the nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, today, as Roberto said, I will present the uh, work performed in the 5G Carmen project on the topic of uh, advanced uh, secure cross-border and multi-domain service orchestration. Uh, this work is in particular performed by uh, one of the technical work packages in the project, which is work package four. And uh, in this webinar, we cover different topics, but I talk about first talk about the enablers of the orchestrated edges platform, which is in charge of uh, service deployment, service continuity in uh, very challenging cross-border aspects. And um, all of that to basically host and uh, ensure service continuity for cooperative connected and automated mobility or CCAM services. Uh, then I talk about software design uh, of our platform. What are the software components? What are the uh, key design uh, features that we enabled in the platform to ensure this type of uh, secu secure cross-border multi-domain service orchestration? And of course, in the end, I talk about plans that we have for uh, validating and testing this uh, platform, which is the phase in which we are currently now. Um, Aligned to these goals that I just presented for this webinar, we are preparing uh, to talk about these uh, several topics. Uh, I will first uh, introduce you with the objectives and challenges that we faced and, of course, what are the, um, what are the goals that we wanted to achieve through the key design features that we uh, enabled in this kind of uh, orchestration. Then I talk more about the, uh, how this is uh, obtained through the hierarchical orchestration and service management very important aspect of session and service continuity. And of course, uh, also talking uh, briefly about the, the security and privacy and data protection mechanisms in our platform. As I said, we talk also about the uh, software design, about methodology of testing. And in the end, I will, um, I will of course, uh, talk to you about the achievements and the remaining step in this project. Let's first start with the enablers. So with the enablers, we actually, uh, wanted to achieve the following objectives. Uh, before I go to the objectives, let me briefly explain the, the figure on the right-hand side. So uh, as Roberto already introduced the project, now you have an idea what the project is about. In this project, we have yeah, tackled very, very challenging scenarios where we have three countries, three MNOs, and we have service deployments that spans all three countries or different cross-border scenarios. We connect vehicles to the, the CCAM services that are deployed on the distributed edge cloud. And the role of this orchestration solution that we are building is to ensure that these edges that which are hosting the applications are orchestrated and to basically ensure the service continuity when vehicle is moving and needs to reattach from one uh, network in one service to another. Uh, we did all of that having in mind the following goals. So we wanted to uh, achieve uh, some sort of uh, very efficient resource management because here we are talking about multi-access edge computing which are not very resourceful in, in the end. And we also want to achieve very efficient multi-domain network service orchestration because we talk about different domains like administrative domain, domains that belong to different countries and also edge domains which are uh, then again uh, available in all three countries. Um, of course, taking into account privacy, security and uh, all of that, we need to integrate all components into one solution for a cross-border system and run it all over 5G, of course, to connect to vehicles to the services and to run that in a very realistic pilot. So you can have some kind of idea of how, how challenging this whole, whole framework is. Uh, and the role of the orchestrators is to have a full control over the resources in the edges and to, of course, perform the uh, lifecycle management of those services that are connecting through the 5G network with the cars. Um, the main enablers for such, uh, for such a framework, of course, are network function virtualization, multi-access edge computing, software-defined networking as well. So these are some of the pillars that we took and leveraged to enable orchestrated 5G edges. We didn't start from scratch. This is basically, uh, these are standards that we focused on. So at CMEC, at CNF, we have 3GPP. 
And I will come back to these um, particular standards in my presentation. I will refer to them and say, where did we see the gaps and how we bridge those gaps to enable and enforce service continuity in such challenging scenarios. Um, let me talk about key design features that we had in mind when we were designing the platform. So we first started with several uh, security and um, other functional and non-functional requirements for the platform. And from these requirements, we derived key design features that we want to have with it, with this platform. So first, we want to achieve optimized lifecycle management of distributed CCAM services, which means that we want in an optimal way to perform, for example, deployment or instantiation of the services in different domains. We want to scale them in, a, in, a, in an optimal way. We want to terminate them when they're not needed or Importantly, for service continuity, we want to relocate edge services from one domain to another, ensuring that connectivity is uh, also uh, achieved. So uh, with that, actually, that is possible to be achieved with uh, the hierarchical edge or, uh, distributed edge orchestration that we built. It consists of two layers of orchestration, top-level orchestration and edge-level orchestration. And I will come back to that later when talking about the architecture. But just to give you um, some sort of idea, like how we distribute the, the operations that are performed in this platform and to enforce edge level orchestrators, which are actually orchestrating the edge domains to have autonomy in, in uh, doing this. So with my next point, the delegation of MANA operations in this distributed and federated environment uh, management and orchestration operations are distributed yeah, and uh, delegated from the top level orchestrators to the edge level orchestrators by signing different uh, management level agreements uh, that I will also mention uh, during the presentation. So basically these uh, agreements are delegating the decision to the edge level orchestrators, allowing them to perform autonomously the operations on, on their edges and also to collaborate with different domains that belong even to different countries and different MNOs. All of that is, uh, of course, not, not enough if we don't couple with 5G system. And to ensure the connectivity with the, with the vehicles that are the direct consumers of our services, we need to couple this edge system or an NFW management and orchestration with 5G system. And this is what we enable in the architecture to basically uh, allow our different elements in the architecture to interfere and to couple with the uh, 5G um, elements in the 5G core, for example, and also other, other segments of the network. End-to-end um, -end mobile data uh, plane control is extremely important when it comes to uh, service continuity because this mechanism enforces service continuity through um, adjusting different policies on the data plane control in the programmable data plane of our platform and it steers the traffic from one edge to another from one uh, basically from vehicle to to the target edge service that we selected for for the deployment but all of these concepts of course will be tackled later on in the presentation i'm just sharing some main key design features now regarding security we uh, provided in this project some overlay security uh, not replacing the already existing uh, 3gpp security mechanisms in 5g but complementing to them and to basically ensure and provide some additional security on the edge uh, infrastructure are uh, regarding multi-tenancy in this project you you may already know that we have different uh, car manufacturers and OE, oems who are consuming yeah whose vehicles are using the services from the edge and we also have uh, different uh, service developers that are deploying their applications on the orchestrated edges so we ensure multi-tenancy in in terms of uh, isolating their services from one of each other if, if that's needed of course um, service continuity enforcement is enabled through proactive orchestration decisions that are made on the deployment of services and through uh, this adjustments in the control plane, data plane uh, control through the programmable data network and traffic steering. Uh, one enabler that is very related to the previous one that I shared is this enabling smart edges and smart applications. Uh, smart edges is different from the smart applications because with smart edges, we enable our orchestrators to be 
uh, smarter or to make more optimal decisions by taking into account different uh, data that is, that is and measurements that are being collected in the infrastructure and in the network as well. So basically here we are making uh, decisions made by orchestrators smarter and in the smart applications we enforce applications to raise some very specific alarms or notifications for the orchestrators and control plane and uh, in, in that case we are keeping orchestrators agnostic towards the applications they don't know what is the specific operation that application is performing but they're rather uh, doing their job but listening to the applications which help them to make uh, better decisions let me go to the architecture now. Uh, in this figure, you can see the overall architecture of the orchestrated 5G edges platform. On the top, uh, NFWE SO or NFWE service orchestrator is the top level orchestrator, which is running in the MNO core. Uh, it is not deployed on the edge and we have only one uh, and if we are so or top level orchestrator per each country, the role and the, yeah, the position of this top level orchestrator is to have a generic view on the uh, edge infrastructure and the services that are deployed over there, as well as uh, resources that are available. And it, it couples and yeah, it, it communicates and collaborates with other top level orchestrators coming from different domains through this federated interface, which is ORR. Other thing, of course, which is really important is that we don't want to burden this top level orchestrator to do all the orchestration work and to take care about all services in all edge domains in one country. So that is why we offload the work to the edge level orchestrators or allow them to perform the operations autonomously. How we do that um, through the management level agreement that I previously mentioned in the presentation. So these management level agreements are uh, passed through the MV1 prime or adaptation layer. They are passed to the edge orchestrators and basically through the, through the signing of these are, or, um, management level agreements, edge level orchestrators are able to uh, perform operations on in, in their own domain, for example, for the CCAM services that are deployed on a particular edge in their own domain. Uh, in this way, this adaptation layer is also adjusting the differences that are yeah, specific for, for different layers. For example, we can have one uh, software solution for the top level orchestrator, for example, open source model, or have another completely other one uh, for the edge level orchestrators. And the role of, of this uh, M1 prime is to adjust those differences and to make them able to communicate and agree on different um, kinds of yeah, aspects of the orchestration. Um, on this edge level here, we actually have two types of orchestrators. Uh, NFWE local orchestrator is in charge of the lifecycle management of uh, services with the help from Mac application orchestrator, which is uh, making decisions uh, based on different data that is being collected from the platform, from the overall edge infrastructure and from the network. So they are helping each other and then collaborate through this uh, LOLO federated interface directly with the other edge domains. This LOL uh, interface is a shortcut because uh, if established during the management level agreement, then uh, it can serve these edge level orchestrators to collaborate directly with the other edge domains without uh, passing all the traffic and all the requests through the top level orchestrators, which are in the core. So uh, let's go further. Uh, regarding the edge system, here we have the overall uh, NFWE infrastructure that is used in the platform to you know, host services and to uh, manage them and orchestrate them. Not only CCAM services that are developed for different uh, types of use cases, but also for Mac value added services that are helping those CCAM services to, for example, disseminate messages to the vehicles and in general to communicate with the vehicles. This can be done through AMQP or GeoService. Then this, for example, value-added service is uh, collecting the different uh, statistics from the uh, uh, radio network information. But uh, CCAM services can be also directly connected to the uh, vehicles, of course, depending on the type of the use case. And uh, here, edge controller is very important, a binding element between the orchestrators and the edge system and or the, the edge platform. 
Uh, it is based on the Etsy uh, standardization, but of course it is going beyond because it doesn't only perform platform management and uh, VNF management as stated and uh, standardized, it also enables edge slicing here on the edge part by allowing different applications to be in different edge slices, defining different service requirements for each of them. And also very importantly, it couples with the 5G uh, system. Um, in the project, and we don't know five, we don't have 5G standalone solution. We we use in the pilot 5G known standalone. That is why uh, we do this um, experimentation and this prototyping in the lab. And in fact, we do uh, have inter uh, yeah interface towards the 5G control plane, which enables retrieving, for example, some configuration data about mobile subscribers, and also to retrieve different mobility events that can be further used to enforce uh, decisions made by the orchestrators. On the other side, we have this uh, N6 interface that uh, configures uh, and uh, adjusts policies for quality of service or for traffic steering, for example, in case we want to steer the traffic from, from one edge system to another. Uh, the other point here is that Edge Controller also performs some very specific or customized networking for different types of services. And uh, uh, again, this is, uh, th this is uh, the extension on top of the standards that we mentioned previously. Uh, regarding the 5G system, uh, it is already clear that we use the 5G radio uh, network and the yeah, and we use transport to connect to through through the network to the services running in the orchestrated edges platform. And regarding the security enablers, uh, this intrusion detection classification uh, module and identity management modules are uh, making sure that operations are uh, performed on the platform are secured and that clients which are basically vehicles are authenticated as well as CCAM services that they are connecting to. Um, this is one example how uh, these components can be deployed in different domains. A uh, concrete example for the project we have uh, Italy and Austria and we can have theoretically as many edge domains as we need and of course uh, here we show one top level orchestrator for each domain and we can have as many as needed uh, edge level orchestrators. Uh, this is one decision for example made by these two edge level orchestrators to migrate or relocate a service from one edge to another depending on different criteria that, that they take into account and then they uh, apply those decisions through the edge controller and edge controller not only instantiates the service instance that is needed on this edge but it also steers the traffic from the vehicle to to this new newly added instance um, let's go now to the life cycle management operations so this is the work that orchestrators perform and uh, by enforcing their uh, decision-making with some additional uh, notifications like uh, coming from the smart applications or coming from different uh, monitoring uh, reports, they can improve every each of these um, operations that are uh, provided here. So based on the management level agreements signed between top level and edge level orchestrators, we can have uh, all these operations performed on the edge level. With instantiation, we talk about uh, deploying service at least in one domain. For some services, we need to deploy two or more instances at the same time in different edges. And for, for example, for scaling, we need to scale out or we need to scale up depending on the needs and uh, if, if uh, other resources allow us to do that. Um, migration or relocation, first we need to ensure that the uh, corresponding instance is instantiated on the target domain. The selection of target domain is performed by the orchestrators and once this is done, uh, another instance is deployed on the target edge and a vehicle can connect to the edge domain to when needed. Uh, this is a good introduction to my next slide which starts talking about the service continuity. Uh, in the end, we, we have termination here, which is uh, terminating service or releasing the resources if service is not needed anymore on the edge so we can use uh, services more more efficiently for some other uh, uh, applications that are running over there. Uh, regarding this uh, session and service continuity, so we, we already know the reasons why we need it. So basically we want to achieve 
session continuity, not only if vehicles are crossing the border, but in case that they are crossing the border and there is a network reselection between different MNOs, we indeed need to improve or try to, to enforce this process to be as smooth as possible from the orchestrators. Basically, the network reselection is something that is out of our scope in this work package, and we're not taking uh, tackling this part, but we are trying to mitigate this challenging handover procedure by performing different actions. So what we first do is to refer to the 3GPP uh, session and service continuity mode three. As you may know, in this SSC mode three, 3GPP is standardizing the, uh, the way of uh, dynamically selecting the UPF or user plane function in the core network or yeah, mobile uh, anchor is, is basically uh, selecting the new UPF and steering the traffic between different UPFs so that user doesn't break the, the PDU session. However, uh, since yeah, we, we have limitations in the production network in the project, we don't have uh, this opportunity to work with a dynamic selection of UPFs, but we have a complementary solution for that. And what we do is to enable traffic steering through the programmable data plane. So once the uh, decision is made to relocate the service from the edge orchestrators, we first instantiate the adequate instance of the service in the target domain and then edge controller steers the traffic from the vehicle through this programmable data plane to the uh, to the target service in the other edge to summarize what do we need to achieve that as you may all already uh, see from from the other from from the from the other slide we need to couple our edge system with a 5G system. And we, in theory, we all, of course, need to retrieve the event notifications to adjust policies on the, on the programmable data plane. If that is not possible, we can also enforce those decisions from the orchestration layers, which are receiving different kinds of notifications and uh, measurements from the, from the architecture, from the overall infrastructure and, and 5G system. Uh, we need to couple edge management system with a programmable data plane through this N6 interface or this N6 reference point to enable data plane traffic steering. And of course, we need to couple edge management with the orchestration layers to proactively instantiate services when they are, uh, even before they are needed actually in the target domain. Uh, here, I just briefly mentioned this architecture, uh, 3GPP architecture for enabling edge applications, uh, because this is the uh, architecture that is being standardized and it enables clients, in our case, vehicle clients, to discover different types of services that are deployed on the edge. And in this case, uh, they are um, using these edge one and edge four reference points, which are dynamically created between edge applications and vehicles to discover um, different types of uh, CCAM services that are running over there so that they can connect to the ones that they are interested. We don't uh, deploy this uh, solution in our, in our project, but what we do is take into account the main goals that this architecture need, wants to uh, achieve, and we enforce that in the other way. So basically here, what we do is to enable vehicle to know the endpoint of the service that it wants to connect to in the CCAM um, orchestrated edges um, platform, and uh, basically letting it know if this endpoint changes of the CCAM service, then vehicle is aware of that so it can reconnect to it. Also, for example, to uh, decrease the time of performing authentication procedure, we enforce this kind of communication between different edges, between edge orchestrators, so that security token can be um, transferred from one edge domain to another, from one uh, CCAM service to another CCAM service, to uh, basically skip that authentication step and to increase the, the performance of, of the service in that way. Uh, this comes to my last slide for this first part. So privacy, security, and data protection is, I, as I already said, uh, in further, uh, let's say, improved on the edge part by enforcing uh, different identity management uh, module solution and IDCM, which are which can be deployed on uh, any edge system. Uh, with that, we allow vehicles uh, as clients and CCAM services to uh, mutually authenticate. Uh, 
And with this intrusion detection classification module, we are uh, securing the whole uh, orchestrated edges platform by uh, being uh, actually very, very um, strong in terms of detection and classifying different kinds of threats that can uh, can happen in, in, the, in, the, in the overall system. Uh, this simulated in vehicle intrusion detection system is further um, in a simulated environment, uh, creating different kinds of threats that can be fed into this IDCM uh, uh, solution on the edge so that it can improve its uh, performance and be, yeah, uh, not to be prone to different kinds of uh, threats and to improve the security. Uh, finally, I also mentioned here distributed ledger technology solution for REN data sharing, which doesn't necessarily need to be deployed on the edge, but this is very important work because in this way, REN data can be shared between different MNOs in the system. And by REN data, we mean the configuration of cells and base stations in the target domain where vehicle is uh, going. And by then knowing what are the frequencies and what are the cells to which we will connect once it uh, reattaches from one network to another, um, the network reselection process can be highly improved and the, the, the latency can be uh, improved in this way, which of course we are targeting in the system to perform in a, in a, in a more efficient way. Uh, let me talk a bit about the software design. So here, I'm not going to go in details how we deployed every single uh, component in this platform because we have very uh, diverse uh, environment. We have many partners who brought their components to, to the system. And you can even select different types of technologies to, de to deploy and develop our, our platform. But we uh, decided and agreed on several important um, principles. For example, we decided to have a cloud native principle in mind when the developing. Uh, all components and the platform. And uh, we achieve that all pieces of software that we bring to the platform are containerized. A very important thing is that interfaces that connect our uh, components and uh, yeah, uh, make them collaborate and uh, talk to each other are uh, developed in um, as open API REST-based uh, interfaces. And I will refer you to the document where you can read more about all of these interfaces if you're interested in the end of my presentation. Uh, open API or Swagger documentation is available uh, for all of these uh, reference points in our architecture. Regarding the overall platform, uh, it is developed uh, as a Kubernetes-based platform, and we deploy this Kubernetes clusters in different uh, Mac platforms on, of all three MNOs. And all components that I mentioned uh, previously are deployed as Kubernetes pods. And uh, I also mentioned edge slicing as a very important um, yeah, uh, added value in, in this orchestrated edges. And how we do this is to isolate different kind, different Kubernetes namespaces so that we can have Mac applications or CKIM applications in one uh, namespace, value-added services in another one, and the monitoring services is in, in the third one. And of course, this can be even further tuned or you can have as many namespaces as you want. Uh, this uh, figure shows one example of how different components in our platform communicate with each other. And uh, as you can see, they mostly use REST APIs to communicate, but there is also another mechanism through the PubSub, which uh, allows orchestrators and adaptation layer or M1 Prime to publish uh, different notifications and data on this local AMQP broker or to retrieve and subscribe to different kinds of notifications. For example, the ones that are coming from the uh, smart applications or um, informing the top level orchestrator about the uh, operations that are ongoing on the edge level so that it is aware of that. Uh, this is uh, how the graphical user interface looks like for our top level orchestrator. And um, due to the complexity and the thing that we want to hide the complexity of the end user, this is what we usually use when we demonstrate the work of the orchestrated edges platform. Uh, as you can see, we have three different dashboards for each of the countries that are affected on the Bologna Munich corridor. And in this part, you can see basically in a very nice and illustrative way um, how to deploy uh, services, how to send uh, and offload and up 
basically to up upload the network service and VNF packages from the top level orchestrators to the edge level orchestrators so they can further proceed with the with the autonomous uh, orchestration. Here, the management level agreements are also defined and if any change needs to happen, like you want to um, allow Agile Orchestrator to perform additional operation, these descriptors can be updated here and this, this operation will be then enforced through the REST communication towards the Edge uh, Orchestrators. Um, one very quick look to the uh, Edge platform in Edge domain. So what we do have here is uh, to show you different namespaces or edge slices that we create. For example, the, this yellow one is for Mac applications. And here we mentioned back situation awareness is one of the applications that we use for uh, showcasing the work of the orchestrated edges. Here we have uh, deployed another one, the edge platform. And for example, in the third one, we are running monitoring services that are feeding orchestrators with different kind of data that they can use to perform their orchestration operations. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, regarding validation and testing, we have defined different KPIs in the in the uh, in the project. But here I focus only on those that we define for this part of the work for the orchestration and management of services. And um, we want to validate the work of this orchestrated edges platform because we want to see if there is an impact an impact, which of course there is, on the performance of the services. To do that, we defined uh, large lists of KPIs and uh, we divided them in several groups like non-functional and functional ones. For example, we then further granule, uh, provide a granular view on the non-functional and functional KPIs. For example, depending on what they are measuring, are they uh, measuring something in the infrastructure uh, or something regarding uh, security or cellular or uh, application related and et cetera. And our strategy for this validation is following uh, uh, this criteria. We are dividing them to different levels of measurability, priority, also components that are involved in measuring and uh, measurement timing. Uh, let me just give you some examples. So this, these are only some of the examples of the KPIs that we defined. And for the non-functional ones, you can see, for example, the runtime orchestration delay, which can be a scaling delay. How long does it take for our platform to scale service when it is needed, either in one domain or in cross-border scenarios? And then, for example, we have this uh, particular uh, security-related KPIs that need to be measured, also com component-associated delay, like how every component in the platform is contributing to the overall uh, runtime orchestration delay. Then localization gain, which is a gain that is showing how successful is our platform in, in terms of um, enforcing orchestrators to autonomously perform orchestration in their own uh, domains. And um, also application placement efficiency, which is showing how uh, efficient the decisions from the orchestrators are when it comes to service placement and service relocation as well. And regarding functional KPIs, we have um, defined here only the ones that are very generic for any type of service. And like, uh, yeah, average response time as a, as, as a round trip time delay for the um, for any uh, service that is running on the, on the orchestrated edges platform, how long is service available, what is the quality of service, what is the throughput, and etc. So to be measured in an end-to-end -end way. In the end, we of course want to evaluate the impact of the non-functional ones to the functional ones. And uh, this is what we are doing currently in the project in this uh, phase of, of the uh, validation and testing. Um, Regarding the environments in which we do the tests, we I already mentioned that we do the um, the whole platform, let's say, related uh, uh, tests in the pilot. But also, what we what we don't have uh, here is, for example, some of the limitations in the, in the network that we cannot uh, test in the in the uh, pilot. So that's why we create simulation environments and also lab to test those different proof of concepts. We have some work performed in the, in the simulation environment, like uh, using Omnit++ and NS3 based simulators. And in this particular work here, you can check more about the results that are presented here uh, from our partners in the project. And um, 
something that I will focus a bit more in the in the uh, upcoming slides is the application testing on the platform. I will give you examples of two two different services that are deployed to support different uh, use cases like um, back situation awareness application and cooperative lane change application. They are both CCAM applications, but they are different because back situation awareness is the one that is de deployed on demand only wherein there is a need for instantiating this type of service on the infrastructure or like there is a emergency situation happened on the highway and we need to address that uh, in an efficient way. Or the, the second one, which is cooperative lane merge in a centralized way, of course, which uh, is supporting all the time the situations on the road that are um, to, for example, perform some lane change between the cars and etc. So to uh, enforce, of course, the, to improve the safety and to yeah, uh, improve the efficiency of those operations, we we host these services on the on the on the edge um, domain. Um, back situation awareness, just a bit of context. Uh, in this distributed setup, we need emergency vehicle to connect to the CCAM uh, service that is running on the orchestrated edge platform. And uh, this is uh, enabled through the CAM messages or cooperative awareness messages that uh, service is receiving from the vehicle directly. And then further, uh, the different kinds of messages like decentralized environmental notification messages or DNMs are uh, sent through the geo service to different areas on the road so that vehicles can um, basically receive those notifications as warnings that they need to clear the lane for the emergency vehicle so that it can pass unhindered through, uh, through, through this road. And a uh, very important aspect here is this direct data plane communication between different instances of the service. Uh, Cross-domain cooperation between different instances is very important because it allows this application that is running, for example, in Austria to already know where the emergency vehicle is, um, what is its speed and when, uh, where it is going. So to prepare the vehicles that are in, own, in its own domain to clear the lane in a timely manner. So even before the emergency vehicle reconnects to this edge here, we proactively instantiate this instance and perform the operation as, as required. Um, this figure shows how this uh, back situation awareness is deployed on the platform. And I will, of course, not go into details how every functionality works. But what I want to show you is that it consists of several microservices. And it is, again, also developed in a cloud native way where all uh, components are running in the Kubernetes pods on the Kubernetes platform in the or orchestrated edges platform. Uh, we have several publications on, on, on this topic and I, here I'm showing uh, two of them, which you can of course reach and uh, find out more about the results that we obtained both in the lab and in the pilot. Um, I mentioned smart edge application feature. So this is very important because with this we are enabling orchestrators to be application agnostic and we are enforcing different kinds of decisions that can be made on the orchestration layer through uh, very important insights from the application. To do that we tested already in the pilot this uh, feature for back situation awareness where back situation awareness is raising notifications on the local AMQP broker which then are used uh, through PubSub mechanisms on the Mac application orchestrator and uh, NFWE local orchestrator, which are then making the decision whether to pro proactively relocate the service or where to send a request for the complete relocation and, and etc. Uh, regarding this centralized cooperative lane change service, I will give you just a bit of context how it works in, in, on the orchestrated edges. Uh, same as BSEF, it is also deployed uh, in, as, a, as a very, very complex service in particular because this one is latency sensitive and it needs to run on the platform all the time. It consists of multiple microservices which are deployed in the same way as uh, back situation awareness on our platform. And uh, for example, what situation address is 
this uh, green vehicle wants to overtake and there is a red car which is driving very fast in, in behind and we want to prevent any kind of collision and we want this operation to be performed in a smooth way. So uh, to do that, how is the CCAM service helping together with the orchestration? So basically uh, orchestrators are making sure that this service is deployed and that it has enough resources to run and to achieve the required uh, KPIs, uh, for example, in particular latency. Message broker uh, here on the platform is uh, collecting messages from all vehicles in the surrounding, and it is further fed to the this server local dynamic map, which is creating contextual, extending contextual uh, environment for the maneuvering service, which finds out about this situation, like where are the vehicles and uh, what are the specifics of this kind of deployment. And then based on that, it creates um, vehicle-specific recommendations, which are further disseminated through the response router and message broker to the affected cars in this particular operation. Uh, just to show you how the platform is deployed in all three MNOs, this is uh, the figure we usually use in uh, deliverables, so you can all also talk, uh, check about it, of course, later on a bit more if you're interested, but this are all the components that are deployed on the platform and um, how they communicate and what are different types of interfaces that we enable between different uh, countries. Um, uh, testing plans, we are already performing this and in the in the pilot, uh, we are doing both uh, local and cross-border tests and uh, for the work that we cannot do in the pilot, we perform uh, in the lab, of course. Uh, let me summarize the achievements and what are our remaining steps. In uh, my presentation, you could have seen that we created orchestration system, which is uh, enabled to perform cross-border, multi-domain and secure orchestration, and uh, which all where all decisions are enforced through different kinds of uh, monitoring services that collect performance metrics. And also this platform tackles very important aspect, which is further um, improving and maintaining service continuity in cross-border scenarios. Regarding security aspects, we uh, made sure that the platform it has an overlay security and that all users are authenticated before they use CCAM services deployed on our platform. Uh, the main remaining steps in the uh, yeah that will be performed in the final phase of the project in which we are now is to test and validate all the operations and all the aspects that I've been talking about today. And uh, both including orchestration and security mechanisms. And uh, importantly, we want to evaluate the impact of the non-functional or orchestration related metrics on the CCAM service performance. But not only that, also evaluating the impact of security mechanisms that we provide there on the service performance as well. So uh, this is all from my side. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I give you more information here on this slide so you can uh, check different publications that we, we have. This is only a, a short list, but of course, uh, you can you can check out more on the on the project uh, site as well, and more to be find about all these concepts that I tried to briefly explain in this deliverable here. Thank you very much. I hope you have some questions for me. Nina, uh, thanks a lot for the very very good presentation. Well done. So we have actually one question coming from the from the audience. Uh, I think it's for you, as it's specific for the presentation. It's from uh, Yilma. Uh, sorry if the name is not correct. And he, uh, she asked, do you make edge application smart because cars are not edge aware and cannot help here? And which information do you process in the edge applications to make them smart? So this is a very interesting question because the edge awareness of the cars in this overall system is a separate concept from the smart applications. Uh, vehicle doesn't have information about the overall uh, path through which it is driving. And uh, edge applications indeed on the uh, which are running on the edge do have because they are connected to different edge uh, services that are running on different edge domains. So they have a broader view on the overall architecture and all the operations that are 
happening over there. So even if vehicle is edge aware, it is not aware of all different edges and what is happening on the entire route. So that is why we, we enforce further these operations by making applications edge aware and of course smart, but uh, any case, it can be even improved if the if the vehicles are also edge aware, so they can help with uh, different kinds of decisions. I hope I answered your question. Thanks, Nina. Uh, let me see if we have other questions. Don't be shy. Just drop a comment on the on our social network. We will be able to see and answer in real time. Uh, otherwise, uh, I see one. Um, so you said that there are, uh, we, you have defined uh, several KPIs and start doing testing and measurements. Uh, is there any preliminary results available already? And uh, if yes, uh, where people can find this information? Actually, yeah, Roberto, this is very important because now we are extensively measuring KPIs that I mentioned. Uh, basically, I mentioned only some of them. And we do have some results and we are preparing now the final deliverable in the work package four. So I would refer everyone to keep an eye on the uh, project website because all deliverables will be uh, the, the, yeah available there so they can find out about the takeaways that we derive from different measurements that we are currently making because now we are also measuring uh, different operational activities in uh, cross-border scenarios in only one domain and all of that is done indeed in the pilot and will be soon i think uh, in in the upcoming months it will be available on the on the project website thanks perfect uh, we actually now have uh, more questions coming on very good so another one we see uh, is, uh, does offloading of orchestration to edges reduce load on uh, the service orchestrator or does it accelerate orchestration of edge application on both? Thank you very much for the question. So uh, offloading of orchestration to edges indeed reduces the load. And this is the, uh, this is the whole uh, idea of offloading the, the load to the edge level orchestrators because otherwise we would need to do all the, all the operations for all edge domains and all edge services in one place on the top level orchestrator. And uh, this of course increases the processing time and increases the processing delay on the top level orchestrators, which ultimately can affect the service performance. If it takes quite long time to scale the service, service might be unavailable and uh, we know what happens then uh, vehicles will not have uh, connectivity to that service and they will not uh, retrieve very important information. Um, any other questions, Roberto? Uh, yes, we have another one coming from uh, Francesco Paolucci. Uh, she congratulates for the presentation, by the way. And uh, so he Thank asked, uh, how do you interface on Kestraton with Edge Controller from the data plane programmable network? And how do you abstract network to the orchestrator? OK, uh, very interesting. So. First, we interface orchestrators with edge controller in the uh, in, in a standardized way, how it is done in the uh, 3GPP, or, sorry, in the Etsy uh, and if we in Etsy Mac uh, frameworks. Uh, there is a interface or yeah reference point between the NFE local orchestrator and edge controller as platform and VNF manager, and uh, this is the way how uh, different decisions that are made at the orchestration uh, at the orchestrator level are then passed to the edge controller to further uh, apply those decisions and reserve resources, instantiate applications and do the, uh, the adjustments. And regarding the uh, obstruction of the network to the orchestrator, this is very important because orchestrators do not interfere directly with a 5G system. They are doing this through the edge controller and edge controller is enabling monitoring services that are collecting different statistics from the network, from the infrastructure, edge cloud. And uh, this all information is then available to the, uh, to the orchestrators through the PEPSUP mechanism. And uh, basically by, by that, uh, orchestrator is aware of what is happening in the network, but it doesn't really interfere directly with it. So everything is done here through the edge system and the edge controller. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. 
Thanks, Nina, really. So uh, I think uh, we, our time is almost done, so we have to close. I just want to use uh, these uh, uh, few minutes I have to uh, remember everybody that uh, you can find information about the project on our website, uh, on our social channels, and that all the webinars that we are doing are uh, recorded. Um, so you can see them uh, on uh, on YouTube, on our playlist. Uh, actually, we still have maybe one question that we can take is from Monica Luis Valdez. So how do you ensure service continuity for content delivery apps to users during transfer to a different Mac platform? It's important. Uh yeah, in, in this, uh, yeah, content delivery apps, I assume the, these applications will have some state to be transferred, which is really important. And uh, we do have some uh, use cases that require uh, services that, oh, yeah, applications that are stateful. Uh, the example that I showed for the back situation awareness is this is not the case. It doesn't have a state, but instead it has metadata to be transferred from one edge to another. But for content delivery applications, there is, of course, uh, a need when you instantiate another instance on the uh, on the edge platform on the target edge platform to also transfer the state through through the uh, through through of course data plane connectivity between two different edges and this is what we allow uh, yeah different uh, service developers to to test and use if they are delivering the the content delivery applications as well so this platform is not only uh, covering those uh, the specific services that I talked about, they can be yeah, used for, for different applications as well. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, I think so. So thanks again, uh, Nina. Uh, it was, it was uh, uh, very interesting for me at least. And uh, so you can see here our, our, uh, the link to our website. We will do other webinars throughout the year. There will be another one in the second half of February. Uh, so stay tuned, follow us uh, on Twitter and LinkedIn and subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't done so, so that you can always, uh, that we can stay in touch and you can uh, know what we are doing and when we are doing other webinars and follow us. We are now in the last year of the project, so I expect plenty of news and information coming from us in the next month. Uh, thanks again for your time. Thanks, Nina, for the very, very good presentation. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.